last part, um, I just want to talk about what when we looked at this per, the per cuisine for each of the athletes, you noticed that they had the cuisine of their country, but there's also other cuisines in there. Did you want to know why I selected those? It's because when you're a soccer player or a different athlete, when you're in, like, say, the World Cup, you compete with the country that your nationality is or where you belong to. But you also, during like off seasons, because World Cup is only every four years, so you can't just be playing on one team. You also you also belong to different clubs, and different clubs come from, say, England. Like Gerard Piquet plays for Spain, but he's also part of the soccer team in England. So you also have to consider those factors that that person's also going to be in a region where they're eating that kind of cuisine as well, because they play for that um, club organization in that country. For years, you had a Swiss player, but he also liked Italian cuisine. When I was researching um, information on these athletes, as you can tell by his last name, he's Italian. His parents came from Italy, so he. When we talk back to the very first slide, what does a diet mean? That comes from what you grew up with and like what your background is and what your nationality is. It affects the diet and the kind of lifestyle you live. So of course, his Swiss player is going to eat foods from his country as well, as well as um, foods from around the regions his club is in. But also because he has Italian parents, that's also an influence into his diet. Cool. Cool. So this last part, we're just going to do like a little bit of a reflection, where I'm just going to ask you guys questions, and you're just going to reflect back on the process. What were some challenges that you guys faced when you're creating diet plans or coming up with foods for your athletes? Nicole? Well, trying to keep it balanced mm -hmm. um, based on their breakdown of their, where their calories should be coming from. I mean, because it would be easy to give someone who likes uh, Asian cuisine, like rice and noodle dishes, but that could mean that it's just carbs and and vegetables like you could be missing your fat and your protein in some of those cases so balancing it out and making sure that you're adding those things was kind of a challenge anybody else how many challenges that they face when creating these kind of diets and coming up with foods for that country or for that player sorry just not no i'm not i don't have a lot of knowledge about that type of food so i might go a little Next question, how can the skills utilized from this activity be translated in creating menus for regular restaurants or regular like eating establishments? It's a tricky question, but I'm going to challenge you guys because I know you guys can, you can do it. I mean, I think the trend nowadays is to eat healthier, eat more local, eat more sustainable, and I think that some of the chain restaurants are starting to identify caloric intake in regards to what their menu is all about so that someone who's on a certain specific diet can sort of cater towards their restrictions or their needs. I think in an upscale, more trendy-based restaurant, um, I, it's hard because you don't know your customer basis. Um, I think you know maybe depending a little bit on income range, and this is maybe taking a stab out in the dark that people that have a higher income range are probably a little bit more aware of healthy foods and might appreciate or sort of work in balance with a chef that's going to that particular operation. I would, I think you can use it to offer a variety on the menu so that you have some things that are going to be high in protein, some things that are going to be high in carb. Um, so that you can satisfy the needs of the athletes and the dieters and everybody's Exactly. Needs. I'm going to be honest, when I go into a restaurant, I'm kind of a snob after coming out of the nutrition major. I'm very aware of like everything that I eat and how that affects me. So when I go into a restaurant, the first thing I'm looking at when I go in there is how much calories do I think is in this and how is that going to affect me? Am I going to, is this going to be enough for me? Is it going to be too much? Is it going to be too little? How is that going to affect me? as well. So I know I'm not the only one and we're starting to get to, we're obviously at a point where we are aware of the um, obese population in our country so we have to become more conscious of what we are putting, how we are creating our foods and how that is sustaining people and making them healthy. Cool. 
So the very last question is, how can you incorporate these skills that you learn into your everyday lifestyle? Hazel? Um, how can you incorporate these skills that you learn through this activity and through this lesson into your everyday lifestyle? Basically, how can you let the skills that you learn today impact the diet plan or the lifestyle that you think of now? When you guys were calculating this, you're calculating the basal metabolic rate. That is what that means is basically the number of calories you need to sustain life and to go about your everyday business without adding like extra activity. So if you were basically just like lying on the couch all day, that's how many calories you would burn throughout the day. Now, if you take this formula or you research the formula for the female, the female counterpart for this formula, and you find out your basal metabolic rate. You find out how many calories you can have throughout the day. That gives you a number in your head of like, okay, I have like a ballpark range. I can think of like um, where I want to eat my calories and where those are coming from and how that's going to impact me. Do you guys have anything? No, I'm I'm looking at this Harris Benedict formula and yeah. like anxious to go see what it says and then how much do I need to. What, how can I incorporate that into what I already know mm -hmm. in order to lose weight? Yeah. Because that's what my goal is, always. <laughs> <laughs> Bathing suit season's coming up, it's summer, come on. Yeah, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> um, so that concludes the end of this lesson. I have a quiz that you guys are going to complete. For the next lesson, you guys are actually going to be doing diet plans for yourself. You're going to be taking these formulas and you're going to be actually creating your own diet plans for the summer. So exactly what Yay. you said, next lesson is going to be all about that. So thank you Gary. very much. Thank you guys. Yay.